Chapter three deals with selection structures and Boolean expressions. And if we take a look at our summary and learning objectives, we are going to be looking at different structures that take different actions based on the results of a conditional test. And by the end of this chapter, you are going to learn how to create simple Boolean expressions with conditional operators. And these are expressions that test true or false. Uh, you will also learn how to create more complicated expressions uh, where you're testing more than one thing. We will learn how to create single-sided if statements where you only take action if the conditional test is true. Uh, we will also learn double-sided if else statements where you do one set of actions if the conditional test is true and a different set if the conditional uh, statement is false. We will correctly use curly braces to execute multiple lines of code. A lot of new developers get very confused about when to use curly braces, <gasps> uh, and they tend to overuse them. Uh, so we will be correctly using them. Uh, we will also create nested if-else structures in addition to switch structures, which is basically an alternative to a nested if-else. Uh, to get out of a switch, uh, we use a break statement. So we will talk a little bit more about how break statements are used. And we'll also cover the purpose of a default statement in a switch structure. Uh, finally, there is a shortened version of an if-else uh, called a ternary if-else, and I will also show you how to create that. So I'm going to hide the table of contents here, and then we'll take a scroll down. First, we're going to talk about conditional operators and Boolean expressions. And uh, understanding these is kind of important because it's critical uh, in your selection statements. So in your selection structures, which are if, if, else, and switch, uh, and any kind of looping structure, which we'll be talking about in the next chapter, you have to test conditions. Conditional tests have a result of true or false, and that is why they are called Boolean expressions. And if you remember from the previous chapters, uh, bool variables can be true or false. In a conditional test, there are several comparison operators that we could use. We can use less than, less than or equal. And when you are coding them, they have to be coded this way. Okay, uh, we can use greater than, greater than or equal. In programming to check for equality, you use two equal signs. If you use a single equal sign, that is an assignment statement. Okay, and so make sure in a conditional expression that you use two equal signs. Uh, and then we have not equal. Okay, and uh, just to kind of emphasize that equality is two equal signs, uh, this, e this if statement is checking to see if age is equal to 18. This it, uh, if statement is assigning the value 18 to age. And you might think, well, wouldn't that get a syntax error? No, it would not, because the syntax is correct, um, but it is not doing what you want it to do. It is not checking for equality. It is a, an assignment statement. Okay. 
The first selection structure that we're going to talk about is the simplest one. It is an if statement. Uh, if statement is a single sided uh, selection structure because it's only concerned uh, it, with what to do if the condition is true. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here. So I have a little programming example here for you. Uh, and I've got the syntax on one side and the code on the other. So the syntax is if, and then in parentheses, you have the condition that you're testing. And then if you only want to execute one statement, if it tests true, you put the statement with a semicolon. Now you will notice that the if statement with the test condition does not have a semicolon because that is not an executable line of code. It's a test. The code that is executed is the statement with the semicolon. Now, if you uh, wanna test a condition and you want multiple things to happen, okay, then you would enclose those lines in curly braces. So this is testing a condition. And then if it's true, it's gonna execute three statements. So anytime you wanna execute more than one after a conditional test, you do have to put it in curly braces. So this example here uh, is basically checking to see if the hours is over 40. And if that's true, we're gonna calculate overtime. We're only going to do one thing here, okay? So we don't put it in curly braces, okay? Because the if statement, if it's true, it will automatically execute the line directly below. The only way it'll do multiple lines is if you put them in curly braces. Okay, other things to remember, the I in if, is lowercase, okay? Again, no semicolon at the end of the uh, if statement because it is a test, okay? It is not executable code. And the rest of these important key points we have talked about. Um, and I'm just gonna re-emphasize when we use the curly braces because this is something that seems to confuse people. We use curly braces with methods, okay? We use it at the beginning and at the end. We use curly braces with classes. We use it at the beginning of the class and the end. We use it with namespaces at the top of the namespace and at the end. And now we are using them with selection structures if we are going to execute more than one line of code. Now, a variation of the if statement is the if else statement. This is a double selection structure because you are going to execute a set of actions when it's true and a completely different set of actions when it is false. And the syntax is if, and then you've got your condition you're testing. And then we've got the action that you're gonna perform when it's true, else, the action you're going to perform when it's false. And again, if you're only going to do one action, you know, as this is showing, you don't have to use curly braces. But if you want to execute multiple statements if it's true, or you want to execute multiple statements if it's false, then you have to enclose the statements in curly braces. So if we look over at the code example, you can see we're checking to see if the hours is greater than 40. And if it is, we are gonna execute two statements. The first calculates overtime and the second calculates total pay. Because we're executing two things, we have enclosed it in curly braces. Now, when it's false, 
we're just going to calculate total pay. That is one statement, so we do not need the curly braces. And again, after the if, on the line with your if, we do not do a semicolon, and we don't put a semicolon after the else, because those are not executable statements. They are part of the condition that we are checking. Okay, and to see some programming examples, you can select the link. And I have several pages of examples here for you to look at. And there are separate videos for uh, these lengthy programming examples. Logical operators. So believe it or not, what we have been looking at so far are simple <laughs> uh, conditions. Uh, they're simple because we're only checking one thing. But in the real world, uh, quite often, uh, things that you want to check are not simple. Sometimes you need to check more than one thing. And that is where the logical operators come into play. Uh, logical operators let you evaluate more than one condition. And the operators that we use are and, or, not, and x or. And those of you who have coded before are probably familiar with and, or, and not, but X or may be a little new for some of you. The logical or is used to touch, test multiple conditional expressions. If any of the expressions are true, the result of the entire expression is true. So the only way a logical or is going to test false is if every single condition is false. Okay, and in this little example below, we've got department number that we set to two, and then we're checking to see if the department number is a one or the department number is a two or the department number is a three. Okay, the minute the condition is true, it doesn't even really have to check anything else. So it's gonna check department number to see if it's a one, no, it's not. Here it checks for a two, yes, it is a two. So it doesn't need to check anything else because at this point, the whole expression is true. So it goes ahead and it writes out, the department gets a $5,000 bonus. A uh, logical and is a little bit more restrictive than an or because it requires all of the conditions to test true. So everything has to test true or the condition result is false. So in this little example, I've got department number set to one and region set to west. And then I'm checking. If the department number is one and the region is mountain, well, the department number is one, that's true, but the region is west. So in this case, they both are not true. This one is, and this one is false. Because the second condition is false, the whole expression is going to test false. Okay, so unfortunately, these poor people will not get their bonus. Occasionally, uh, newer programmers confuse when to use and and when to use or, and they create an impossible condition, <laughs> which is a condition that will never ever be true. Uh, and so to give you an example of this, um, yeah, instead of using the or, or department number, they use the and. And there is no way that a department number can be three different values. This is an impossible condition. So it will never test true. Okay, so kind of be aware of that. 
the not can be a tad confusing uh, because it changes the value to the opposite of the result that was calculated. So if the expression was true and you put a not in front of it, it makes it false. Okay, so here I've got department is a three. And then you can see inside the parentheses, I'm checking to see if it's a one, two, or a three. Okay, so this part of the equation would be true. Then comes the dreaded not. <laughs> so what that does is this was true and not changes it to false. Okay, so if it's not true. Okay, so it's kind of strange logic. Um, I use not equal quite often, but I don't normally do something like this. Um, so if it's not one, two, or three, I would probably say department number greater than three <laughs> instead of using this. There's quite often a different way of coding it that's a little bit more clear. X or, so this is uh, probably new for some of you. It, it's not in all languages. Uh, the not, the and, and the or is something that you're gonna find in a lot of different coding languages. X or you are not gonna find as often. Um, and with X or, it's like a regular or, but only one thing can be true. If more than one is true, the entire expression tests false. So one and only one can be true. So here I've got an example. Um, likes cake is true, likes candy is false, likes cookies is false, and likes fruit is true. And then we're checking the values. So if likes cake, and we don't have to say likes cake equal true, okay? Because it's a Boolean. So when you just put the Boolean in an if statement, it is checking to see if it's true. So if likes cakes is true, or likes candy is true, or likes cookie is true, okay? Only one of these can be true and then everything is true. If more than one is true, the expression is false. So likes cake is true, likes candy is false, likes cookies is false. So this is going to evaluate true. Okay, in this example, we're checking likes cakes, likes candy, likes cookies. We're also checking likes fruit. So likes cake is true. Likes candy is false. Likes cookies is false. Likes cake or likes fruit is true. We're using X or. The rule is only one of these can be true. Likes cake and likes fruit are both true. So that makes this entire expression false. Okay, and because it's false, it's gonna come down here and execute what's under the else. Okay, and so I do have quite a few little examples here for you to look at. And we're going to take another quick look at this example here because uh, somehow the link got uh, kind of messed up. So I just added a link at the top here to the correct example. So make sure uh, if you see anything like that, that you go to the correct set of examples. And this has several different programs that are using uh, those logical operators. 
So this example is using the logical and, the not, and x or. Okay. And so you can kind of read through these. Uh, there will be links at the top with separate videos that you can watch that will walk you through these programs. So we've talked about a single-sided if, and we've also talked about the if-else statement. And we've looked at simple and complicated conditions or conditional expressions. Uh, we are going to take a little look at a nested if-else statement. And these statements are typically coded when you need to test a condition. And if it's false, you need to test a different condition. Okay, And so the condition that you're checking when false is kind of dependent on the first conditional test. Okay. And so it, you can have several different levels of nesting. Um, but this is the basic syntax for it. And eventually you will get to the end where you're not doing another conditional test and you're just executing something if everything was false. Okay, so the key to using this nested if else is that the additional conditions that you're checking are dependent on the original testing false. So this has to test false in order for this condition to be tested. Okay, and I have some examples that you can take a look at. And for some reason, all these links are going to this chapter four page. So hold on a minute. All right, so for some reason, everything's going to this uh, chapter four example. So um, you will have to pick chapter three nested if else, and that you should be able to see these if else examples, which will have a video link at the top for you to select and it'll walk through the code. Uh, the ternary if else. So this is a kind of a shortened up version. Uh, and people who've been coding for a while tend to like this, uh, especially in uh, right line statements, uh, because it saves them several lines of code. So uh, with this version, you could take an if else statement like this, Okay, pretty straightforward, um, where you've got your condition. If it's true, you're writing out one thing. If it's false, you're writing out something else. Um, you can take a statement like that, and you can shorten it. So the shortened version, it's you put pretty much the entire if-else inside the right line and you use the ternary operator, which is the question mark, which is why it's a ternary if else. So here's the condition that we're checking. And that comes before the question mark. And you can have you know, one condition or multiple conditions. After the question mark is what you want done if the condition is true. And because we're in a right line statement, this is what you want printed if the condition is true. Okay, and then we have a colon, and then we've got what you want done if the condition is false. And again, because we're inside of a right line statement, it's going to print this out if it's false. So you can see this is one statement versus on the other page, we had four lines of code, okay, you know, with two different council.write line statements. 
So this is quite a bit shorter. Um, and this is what it looks like if we're only testing one condition. So if we're only testing one thing, uh, then we don't have to put it in parentheses. We had to do the parentheses because it was multiple things we were testing. Here, we're only testing one thing. Okay, and again, this signifies that this is an if statement. Okay, before the question mark is the conditional test. After the question mark is what you're going to do if it's true. And then we have a colon. After the colon is what you are going to do if it's false. And I think this is, again, for some reason, going to the random number example. Uh, something must have happened during publishing. Uh, so hold on. I'm going to put a link into the right one. All right, so uh, I've added uh, some additional links here because for some reason, all of my chapter three is going to this page. But um, for ternary if else, you just click on the link and it will take you to the correct page. And again, there will be a link to a video that's going to walk you through uh, this these examples. Okay, so at least that one is working. All right, uh, moving on here. We are going to talk about the switch statement. So the switch statement is uh, kind of neat uh, because it lets you check a variable or an expression, and it lets you check for multiple values without doing a real complicated if condition. Um, so you have switch and then a variable or expression, and then you have case statements. After each case statement is a value that you are checking to see if the variable or the expression is equal to the value. And you can have as many case statements as you want. So uh, this is kind of a neat, clean way of checking a variable against multiple values. And the way you code this is you'll notice switch is lowercase, then you have parentheses with the thing that you are checking. So it's either you know something stored in a variable or a conditional expression. You have an opening curly brace. And then at the very bottom of this structure, you have a closing curly brace. Okay, and then you have the keyword case, a space, and then this is what you are checking. Okay, it can be a number, it can be a string, it can be a character, okay? and then you have a colon. Below that, if the variable is equal to this value, it will execute the statements. And it's like a little flag is turned on. So once it finds a true value, it will keep executing statements, okay? Even uh, if it gets done with this little chunk, um, it would continue on and execute the statements in the next little section, which is why we have to put a break in here. Okay, so once it finds an equal value, it's going to start executing. And the only way to get it to stop executing statements is to put the break in. Okay, so here, once uh, the variable is equal to the value, we're going to execute these statements. And now we are going to break. And what break does is it takes control out of the switch to the statement below the switch. So it skips all the rest of the code. Okay. And when you're coding these case values, you can actually have multiple case statements execute the same code. So if uh, value two and value three 
had the same code that needed to be executed, you could actually code it like this. Um, the important thing is that you use the word case, and then you have the value entered with a colon, and it's perfectly okay to then add another case and value with the colon. Okay, it'll execute all the statements until it hits the break. Okay, and you can continue on with this. And then it is good practice to have a default statement. Uh, which basically means if the variable wasn't equal to value one, it wasn't equal to value two, wasn't equal to value three, it wasn't equal to value n, then it will come down and execute the default. Okay, and so to show you what this looks like, um, we will be taking a look at some of the uh, programming examples really quick. Uh, what I just told you uh, regarding how it works is explained here. The key points you need to remember when you are coding a switch is that the keyword switch is required and so is your condition that you are checking. It's a variable or a condition. You can only have one variable or one condition in here. You can't have multiple things uh, because you're checking to see if this is equal to the case values. Uh, the variable or the expression has to be the same data type as the case values. So let me go back here. If this is a string, then value one needs to be a string. Value two needs to be a string. Value three needs to be a string, okay? So they have to be the same data type. Uh, so the values after the keyword case, um, they can't, be variables. Um, so you have a variable in the condition, but you cannot have variables as the case values. So they have to be constant values or literals, which basically means you kind of have to hard code text or numbers. The case statements are required. The default statement is optional, but it is good practice to put it in. And super, super important that at the end of every action statement block in a case that you put the break. And the rest of this we've talked about. So I'm gonna quick take a look here. We're gonna go to chapter three, switch statements. Okay, and so here's an example. Um, and you'll notice that um, I did a little different thing here when I created uh, the color variable. I kind of set it to string.empty as a value to start with. Uh, that is something that you will see moving forward quite often, and I made it nullable. Uh, so then we ask the user, what's your favorite color? We read it in. Here we are converting it to lowercase, okay? And then we're doing a switch on color. And the reason we converted it to lowercase is so that we could check whatever they type. And so um, here we've got orange, red, and yellow, and they're all gonna execute the same code. You can see we have a break here, blue, purple, green, all executing the same thing. And then you can see the default um, has something completely different. Okay, and there are several different examples. And again, uh, there will be a link to a video you can watch that kind of explains how all of them work.